Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Thanks for tuning in. Got another great show lined up for you this week. I know you'll think so after viewing it. Our buddy Austin Ash joining us. Austin, how you doing? Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you, Austin. Thanks for doing this. We got Austin in studio this year. We had him on Zoom last year, but we're going to catch up with Austin here in just a second for the first two segments, and then we're going to close out with Sam Elgin, mutual friend of uh, Austin and mine, and Sam with Formula Basketball, if you remember. And Austin and Sam are going to be working at the Luca Garza Academy basketball camps next week as we record this on Thursday afternoon afternoon, August 11th. Of course, next week is going to be Tuesday, which is the 16th in Davenport, and then Wednesday, the 17th in Cedar Rapids, and then Friday the 19th in the Des Moines area. So get all those dates taken care of. Get there. You'll be glad you did because Patrick McCaff McCaffrey will be there. Connor McCaffrey will be there. Frank Garza, Luca Garza, Austin Ash, and Sam Elgin. So it's all laid out for you. So Austin, we got business out of the way now. Now we can get down to it. So congratulations to you. You announced this spring. Austin, as you can see on the shirt is going to the Citadel. He's going from being a Hawkeye to a Bulldog. Of course, as you know, last year when Austin and I talked, uh, Austin's dad, Carrie Ash and I are, grew up together, great friends for a long time. And uh, Austin's dad and I uh, played basketball together, football together, baseball. Uh, your dad is a year older than me. He, and he even umpired my high school baseball games when I was a senior in high school. And he was very impartial and fair, as you can imagine. So, but, uh, so I've known Austin his whole life, as I've mentioned on this show many times. And I don't play favorites on this show, but yeah, I do with Austin. So Austin, let's get to it. So talk to us before we get to your decision on going to the Citadel. And again, congratulations on a full ride scholarship there. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Let's talk about last year when you accepted your full ride to be an Iowa Hawkeye after uh, four years and then your fifth year. And so now you have your COVID year. So let's you and I talk about some memories. And, and first of all, we've got to start from what a thrill it was to get that full ride scholarship where we left off last year. Mm -hmm. To now you go to senior night, you're blowing out Northwestern, you hit a three that, were, <laughs> I, I'll be kind and say you were in North Liberty. You hit that thing from a bomb from Carver Hawkeye. But uh, instead of saying Caitlin Clark range, we'll say Austin Ash range. And Jack Devlin then outshot you and went half court during a timeout, student manager, and everybody went crazy. But what a culmination for you. Talk about that night of walking off Carver for the last time, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and what a great senior night with all your friends. Yeah, it was special. Um, you know, the year before we had a good senior day. Um, obviously not fans there. Family couldn't be on the court. You know, it was nice. It was special. We got a win. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, man, this place would have been awesome if the place was rocking. You know, what got in? I didn't get in that game either. Um, so then, you know, when I came back to last year, I knew it back in my mind. I had a chance to, you know, be able to play on senior day, have my mom and dad and sister on the court, uh, which was special, you know. And then, obviously, like you said, got to play at the end of the game in a blowout and then hitting that shot. Then I'm dribbling the ball at the end of the game and the crowd cheering my name was awesome. <laughs> I always remember that. And then, you know, Jack Devlin hitting that shot in the timeout and the whole team swarming him to half court. Coach McCaffrey out there with us. It was, it was special. It was awesome. And it was game I'll always remember. You know, uh, and to me, and I, and I see my fellow uh, Castellia Postville native or Postville High School uh, native, Kerry Ash, across the court, and the grin on, you mentioned your family, uh, but your team family, too. So obviously your mom and dad are proud, Kerry and Jean and your sister, uh, Emily. Everybody's very happy and proud, you yourself. But to see your other family, your team, I, I honestly think Connor and some of your teammates were as happy or happier than you for your own shot, weren't they? Yeah, no, that's something I've always looked for throughout the years is when I hit a shot, look at the bench's reaction, <laughs> see everybody go crazy. But that's one thing that's special about our group is everybody just wants to see everybody else do well. It's not just you know a selfish mindset. They want to play well, but they get more excited when someone else does something good. You know, Austin, not just the closeness of your team, but to see the families that go over and talk to your parents after the game. And, you know, your dad and I grew up in a small town in northeast Iowa, Castellia, Postville area. And, Obviously, the community's close, the players are close, but to see at a place like the University of Iowa, it's not just fodder. The players are close, but your families were close, and that was cool to see. Talk about that experience. Well, absolutely. You know, it's nothing better than seeing your family out there after a win, you know, go out to eat, celebrate with them a little bit, and other families go to the same place, stuff like that. And, you know, on the road, seeing everybody there behind the bench, you know, just to see that support, you know, it means a lot to, to everybody, and it's just, it makes us all closer together. All right, I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire. You don't have to play favorites, but just tell me best memories of Luca, of a Joe Wieskamp memory, of a Jordan Bohannon memory, of a Keegan Murray. Let's we'll just go with those, the big four. All right. Fair enough? All right. And your time at Iowa, and then your own favorite personal memory. Was it senior night when you made the bomb and you were dribbling off yeah. the court and you were chanting your name? Is it that, might be. It that, might be. I don't know. I okay. might have one up my sleeve here. Okay, so, right. so let's start with, with uh, J. Bo, then we'll go to Luca, then we'll go to Wieskamp, and then Keegan, right. and then your favorite memory of yourself. Sounds good. Uh, for Jordan, for me, it's the obvious answer. It's got to be when he left the shoes uh, at Hilton <laughs> on the floor, you know, after we. 
beat them down by about mm -hmm. 25 and stuff like that. It was it was a cool memory. And that locker room was something special after that. And then, oh, I bet. You know, that was it was just special. Um, yeah, Luca then. Sure. Luca, for me, I think it would be something off the not not in game. It'd be like you know, open gyms. Me and him just going back and forth. You know, shooting threes and go, talking crap to each other, stuff like that. You know, that that's what it had a little to be bit for of him. junk being talked back oh, yeah. and forth. Oh yeah, was my chance to get at him. You know, for sure. <laughs> Love it. For sure. All right, how about Wiz Camp? Uh, another easy answer at Rutgers. The shot. The bank. Yep, Connor McCaffrey, Nicholas Berry got a, got a hand on it right in front of me on the bench. You know, it looked horrible. Lefter than left off the side. Find a way to get in. Now I was I was a little worried that it didn't count because I, I didn't know if the side of the backboard yeah. if he got it off or everything and that was the victory that we stole and that that locker room was special as well it was crazy from another quiet guy Keegan Murray yeah steady was, silent yeah. consistency but anything jump out at steady Keegan? killer I definitely I'd say Big Ten tournament Indiana just those the he put on a clinic I think he was eight for ten or eight for nine from three like he had one where he shot faked and shot on it it was just unbelievable and that. That game was special, capped off by a, another Jordan game winner. But yeah. Keegan, Keegan hit some crazy shots to keep us in that one for sure. So let's talk Austin Ash's memory of Austin Ash. What's your favorite memory? I think I, I keep going back to Iowa State. It was a COVID year. We played him at home. We're up by 25-30. And I pulled up from about you know, 32, 33 feet and turned around when it was in the air. And that was pretty special. And, and it was, you know, I love beating those guys. So it was okay. cool. You and Fran go so far back. Favorite Fran McCaffrey coach or person, you and Fran, favorite thought or memory of Fran and you? I would just say, you know, being on the stage at, the, at winning that Big Ten championship and embracing with him, you know, and all the teammates and stuff like that and seeing how happy he was and everybody was on the stage, it was, it was truly special. We're going to cap that off and just say, because we're going to talk about your choice to go to the Citadel, your transfer and full ride scholarship there in the next segment. But what a season it was. And Chris Murray and I sat here in January when he joined me. Keegan joined me last summer. Uh, what an amazing run you guys were on, and that had to be with that Big Ten championship. I talked to Peyton Sanford earlier this year uh, via Zoom, and he said the same thing. That had to almost seem surreal. You guys were on a roll. Yeah, no, we were hot. We were the hottest team in the Big Ten, one of the hottest teams in the country, hitting double-digit threes most of those games. It, it was awesome. It was fun. felt like we couldn't, couldn't be stopped. And briefly, because I've talked to former players, but you were there. What happened against Richmond? Your thoughts, once you just let a team hang around that long, eventually it catches up to you. What, what were your thoughts about that? You know, NCAA tournament, anybody can beat anybody. I think going into that game, Richmond was 8-0 as a 12 seed. So, you know, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. You know, we played hard. Shots really didn't fall. I don't know how many threes we hit, but it was way lower than what we did in the Big Ten tournament. And, you know, we still went out with that championship ring, and nobody could take that away from us. I saw pictures, and next time I'll have you bring it. But this yeah. thing looks like a watch on Austin's hand if you go to social media. But <laughs> yeah. congratulations on that. Congratulations to you and the Hawkeyes of winning the Big Ten Tournament Championship. But then also you're accepting a full ride to the Citadel. So come back. We're going to have a second segment with Austin Ash and talk about his decision to transfer from a Hawkeye to a Bulldog, from an Iowa Hawkeye to a Citadel Bulldog. So stay tuned for more of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and Austin Ash. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. To make the Mershman Seeds delivery experience even better this year, Mershman Seeds is offering you a brand new Apple app called Mershman Delivers. It will give you the estimated time of delivery down to the second and updates you as our truck makes its way to your dealership. Mershman Delivers will provide you the answer to the number one question we get when it comes to delivery. When exactly will the Mershman truck be here? Available on the Apple App Store. Download Mershman Delivers today. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. You can see Austin Ash stayed with us. Austin, you doing okay? Yep, having fun. All right, same here. Second segment with Austin, and we'll close out the show with Sam Elgin from Formula Basketball talking about Luca Garza's basketball camp upcoming that Austin's going to be at with Patrick and Connor McCaffrey, Luca Garza, Frank Garza, and Sam Elgin. So, Austin, we left uh, the last segment, and we closed out talking about what a great run it was at Iowa for you for five years. Now we got to talk about your decision to become a Citadel Bulldog in the Southern Conference Ed Conroy back for his second coaching stint mm -hmm. at the Citadel. What went through your mind? What were your considerations? Other schools, 
Division One school, full ride scholarship. Congratulations mm-hmm. again. Beautiful area, Charleston, South Carolina, on the coast between Myrtle Beach and, and as I mentioned, Savannah, Georgia earlier. What was in your decision making process and what brought you to Citadel? Yeah, you know, it was, it was a long process as there was over a thousand names in the, the transfer portal this year. So I can't imagine what some of those coaches went through in a day, just looking through players and stuff like that. So, you know, it was stressful at the start, waiting to hear from schools and stuff like that. Um, you know, eventually I kind of had the connection through coach and coach knew Coach Conroy a little bit. You know, he's at Minnesota when, um, for a while there. And then he reached out to me, talked about getting me onto campus eventually. And then there was a little bit of delay before I could get down there and stuff like that. And then, you know, my mom and I took the visit. I really liked you know, Coach Conroy and our relationship that we had, um, as well as their assistance there. And then, you know, just seeing the campus, seeing the arena. And then they took me to the beach uh, one of the nights we were there. And, Good um, move. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> Take the it's, Iowa it's kid good, to the beach. It's a good recruiting tactic. My, mom liked that one. <laughs> I bet she yeah. did. And, um, you know, I really just fell in love with the place and the coaching staff and thought there'd be a lot of opportunity there for me. So really just excited to get things going there. So when we take a look at some of the other schools, and I won't mention any, but there were a handful of other Division mm-hmm. One schools that offered you scholarships. And so for you, it was the relationship. And, and, and I know a coach anymore can't say you're going to play X amount of time. But mm-hmm. my presumption is Coach Conroy probably said at least, Austin, we need a shooter. Uh, they had a losing record last year, rebuilding, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yep. Good chance for a six-year COVID senior to come in and get some minutes. Any conversation about minutes, or is that something you even looked at when you went there? No, yeah, definitely. I was looking for opportunity. You know, I loved my five years at Iowa, but this last year I was, you know, looking to make an impact at a school and be a part of a winning program and be a reason for that um, on the floor. Um, so, you know, they looked at the ga- looked at the game tape a little bit, showed where I could fit in when he was coaching there and the offense that they run, and thought I really fit that system well. And you know, they needed a really good shooter, and that's kind of what they brought me in to do. And you know, that's what I'm looking to do: get out on the floor and let it fly. I, you see the smile on my face, knowing you your whole life. I couldn't be more happy for you. And again, the Iowa run for you was fantastic. It's what every Cedar Rapids, you know, you're from Cedar Rapids, went to Mount Vernon High School. But you, you had to love that. But now, yeah, you get a chance. And you told me all those years, Dave, I want to play. Dave, I want right. to play. And you got the game. I mean, you know, you can shoot with anybody, as we talked about. Even Jabo says you were the best shooter on the Iowa team. But we, that's what I wanted to hear was the opportunity. Nobody mm-hmm. can promise you. I mean, they can tell you, hey, you're going to play. Mm-hmm. But until you actually know. But I like that he showed you film. Here's where you fit. And I also love the fact that you could kind of be that leader to rebuild that team. Right. Yeah. You know, it's uh, Coach Conroy was at Vanderbilt last year, so it's a whole new staff. Um, I think there's five or six returning players. And got a handful of transfers and a handful of freshmen. So, you know, someone's got to step up, and I'll, that's kind of what I'm going to try to do is be that leader and, you know, hopefully um, get it back to a winning program, which it was before. On the floor and off the floor being a leader. So I know you've, you've got your undergrad and your master's at Iowa. Are you going in another master's program? Yeah. How does this sit academically for you? Yep, um, sports management program. I um, got accepted into that, and I'll start that this fall. So, you know, I think I can finish it in a year. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Fantastic. So, Austin, we talked last year when we had you on Zoom again on this program. Where do we go from here? Are you wanting to go to coaching? You still want to go into coaching? Talk to us about your future, please. Yeah, so after this year, you know, I'll, I'll see my options and stuff like that, but hopefully you know, get on staff somewhere and you know, work my way up the ladder that way and um, coaching college basketball, and we'll see where that, where that takes me. I love that. Austin, we got to close out with this. And the future of college athletics, as you mentioned, you, you're, you're looking at going into coaching after your playing days. Where do you see NIL, the collectives? We know the University of Iowa's got a few. Every other college and university does. Where do you see this going? Yeah, you know, it's, it's good that athletes are, you know, able to finally receive pay and stuff like that. But I could definitely see a cap coming onto it at some point, you know, whether it's 100000 or 200000 something just to level out the recru- recruiting field a little bit. You know, you got 17-year-olds taking four or five visits, and then it becomes a, I got 100000 here, 600000 here, a million here, stuff like that. You know, and then I think that transfer portal is just going to get bigger and bigger, and then it gets messy with, oh, I got paid this here, stuff like that. You know, I could see it kind of going downhill from there, but, you know, if you put a cap on it and stuff like that, I think it could could sustain. You know, I think that, in, in, I know you've got a lot to say on this, and, and, you know, you're an athlete in this right now, and I think if you were coming out of high school, if you were a kid, hypothetically, let's, let's use... Uh, I'll use the SEC as an example since everybody wants to talk SEC football. Let's say you go to Alabama and they say, we can offer you this, and you'll be the number three or two receiver here. And you don't have a professional team to go against. And you can say to a kid at the University of Missouri, yeah, the Chiefs are over the other side of the state. The Rams are now in L.A. They're not in St. Louis anymore. You'll be the number one guy here. Or you know, Iowa, for example, or Nebraska. You don't have pro- professional major mm-hmm. league teams here. Does that weigh into your recruiting? I gotta believe if you're a kid, you're looking at the best opportunity still, right? Yeah, no, for sure. You know, you got to weigh all your options and stuff like that. And I think, 
you know, before this NIL stuff, I think that was a big sell for Iowa. You know, there's no pro teams when you, you go to the mall or you go to anywhere, you know, people are stopping to take pictures with you, you know, Luca Garza, Keegan Murray, those guys were the stars of the state for a while. And, you know, kids like that, you know, they, you like to be uh, known who you are and stuff like that. While you're at a school with four professional teams, you're just, you know, one of those people. So I think what you told me last year, and I don't want to get too inside and I don't want to get you in trouble, but the thing I like about this is it's a great teachable moment. Can you take us in there a little bit? They talk to you uh, at the university about marketing, about mm -hmm. opportunities, correct? It's a, it's a, almost like a class. No, yeah, for sure. We've had multiple people come in and, you know, because we got guys making money through NIL and stuff like that and, you know, plan out a budget and stuff like that. So that way the guys don't just get this money and blow it all the way on, <laughs> you know, Nikes and sneakers and all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, we learned a lot. And, you know, it's beneficial to the guys that, you know, we're bringing a lot of money so that money sticks with them later on in life and they can use it. Tax implications, investments, all that type of thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, and, and, and really it becomes more of a, a social media class and a marketing class. You get to learn all that. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see if we talk to you in a number of years when you get done playing this year, you know, this next year, and then you go into coaching. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Do you have any thoughts on that any more in the future? Are they just going to straight out and say, Kid, you know, athletes, here's what you're going to get paid? Uh, you mentioned there's got to be a cap because, yeah, eventually the rich are just going to get getting richer. Yeah, you know, I think... You know, like you said, the rich are going to get richer and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you need a good fit. Otherwise, you're going to be there for a year or two and be like, you know, the money's good, but I, I want to be on the floor. I want to be playing and you want to be in a good fit, you know. So like if you have a family on a visit, at the end of the day, the money's good, but you want to be in a spot where you're happy and, you know, you're winning games, stuff like that. So I think that's what it comes down to. That That's it right there. What Austin Ash just said is, is what I think it is. You, you, I, I couldn't agree more with you. Because if you want to make that money or get that NIL, you've got to be happy where you're at. Otherwise, right. you're going to be transferring every year, and then, then what do you have? You're right. not happy. Exactly. Austin, I can't even begin to thank you enough. I knew the time would just blow right by for us. Absolutely. Great stuff. Thank you again. Yes. Known this guy his whole life. Uh, again, his dad and I grew up together, Carrie. And, and I got to tell you, um, from Castellia Postville, Iowa, to where this guy is going now, uh, I couldn't be happier for you. The Citadel Bulldog, Austin Ash formerly of the Iowa Hawkeyes, but you'll always be a Hawkeye, right? You bet. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. it. Hey, for Austin Ash, I'm Dave O'Hara. We'll be back with more Hawkeye to close off the show with his buddy Sam Elgin from Formula Basketball. We'll be talking about a little Luca Garza Basketball Academy camp upcoming in just a few moments. Being a farmer is very rewarding to me. I see a lot of benefits that come from the farm. You learn good work ethic. You learn how to take care of what God's given you. We have to be good stewards of the ground if, if we're going to continue to expect it to produce well and help us feed the world. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through. And the same holds true here. From our fair upfront pricing to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. When you're a farmer, there's a lot of things you can't control, but there is a way to give your soybeans an early advantage. Mershman Seed Soybean Seed Treatment featuring Turpidity ST. An independent analysis has proven faster and more even emergence every time. Just look at the Mershman difference. Give your crop the boost it needs for a uniform stand. For the best yields, grow with us. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hare. You can see our buddy Sam Elgin. Sam, how you doing? Good. How are you, Dave? Doing great. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Obviously, we can talk Austin and yeah. all day between you and yeah. me, but... Uh, I will have you talk just a little bit yeah. about the maturation. You've coached Austin last time you were on here. Yep. Uh, with the Peyton Sanford show, you were talking about, you know, your affiliation to Austin and the yeah. family. And, boy, what a, what a journey he's been on. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, it's been fun to see from a coaching training standpoint and just as a fan over the over the last four or five years at Iowa. And then, obviously, I'm going to continue to watch him when he goes off to uh, South Carolina down, in the, down at the Citadel. But... Um, yeah, my relationship with Austin goes back to essentially the start of my basketball business, um, which is called Formula Basketball. I do one-on-one -on -one basketball training sessions. I started that when I got done playing at Upper Iowa. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a funny story. So I was doing my workouts over at Stony Point YMCA, um, which is on kind of the southwest side of Cedar Rapids where Austin originates from. 
and he was about a seventh or eighth grader, and uh, I, I noticed him and his dad coming in quite frequently. So one of the days I just walked into the gym, and Carrie's yelling at Austin, and they're, they're button heads. Right. Yeah, they're button heads. And so I, uh, I go over there, and I said, hey, this is kind of the venture I'm on right now. I just started up the, this concept of one-on-one -on -one business, and I don't think Carrie even let me finish my sentence. And uh, <laughs> he's like, take him, do what you got to do. So then that spawned to, uh, I would pick Austin up in the mornings because he couldn't drive yet. So um, I'd pick him up at his house and we'd drive to Stony Point YMCA and we'd do um, about an hour of skill work. Sometimes we'd throw some weight room stuff in there, but it was a lot of skill work on the floor, shooting, ball handling, that kind of stuff. And then uh, he'd go back home and, and go off to school and then uh, we'd do it again the next day. So What I love about you tell, retelling that story, because yeah. you told that yeah, earlier. Absolutely. But, but no, I, I love that because as you see all of my information at the bottom of the screen and all of Sam's is there as far as social media goes. And again, Formula Basketball, he's a Center Point, Iowa guy, Cedar Rapids area guy, as you mentioned, Upper Iowa. But I wanted Sam to retell that story, and thank you for doing that, yeah. because what it shows is the individual attention yep. that you and I have talked about, that you give your athletes, male or female. And yep. I think that's imperative yeah. that uh, parents know that about a guy like Sam. Yep. And now we're going to talk about another coaching uh, level you're at. Yeah. LGA on your nice shirt. There yes. The Garden Academy basketball camp. We Absolutely. It during Austin's segment. Yep. It'll be Austin Ash, Connor McCaffrey, Patrick McCaffrey, Frank Garza, Luca Garza, and Sam Elgin. Yeah. So talk to us uh, in Davenport. We record this on uh, Thursday afternoon, August 11th. So it's going to be in Davenport on Tuesday the 16th, Cedar Rapids Wednesday the 17th, and then Des Moines area on Friday the 19th of August. Get to one of those locations. Yep. Tell us, give us a little snippet. Yeah, of what's absolutely. Involved. So uh, I'm glad you brought up the shirt. So uh, I actually was running a youth basketball camp in Central City, Iowa today, um, and I got a notification on my phone that a package had been delivered, and it was the uh, 450 T-shirts that we ordered for the <laughs> Luca Garza Academy. So, so what this is is over the summer, um, about uh, late May, Luca um, Garza obviously, and then his dad Frank had kind of the concept of creating the Luca Garza Academy which is gonna spawn into many different avenues, um, but kind of the first venture is Luca coming back here to Iowa and then doing what Dave just kind of mentioned, um, which is the uh, Luca Garza Skills Camp. Um, it'll be a three day event, three separate days, so that kids don't have to go to every th all three days, they can if they want. Um, but it's a three different, uh, three different day venture. We're gonna do some skill work. Luca will take some pictures, sign some autographs, um, kind of give back to the great state of Iowa that supported him so well. And what I'll do, Sam, and we'll have that information at the bottom of the screen, and it's on social media and yeah. the website itself. But yep. Sam, I can't thank you enough. You know you're going to be back throughout the season with us yeah. when we talk basketball because Connor McCaffrey's coming yep. back, Chris Murray's coming back, yep. uh, some new recruits coming in, Peyton Sanford coming back. Yeah, going to be some fun stuff. I can't wait to talk more Hawkeye yeah, basketball. Absolutely. Here. Sam Elgin, thank you so much. Absolutely. Friend. Great seeing you. Great to see Again, you. All of Sam's information at the bottom of the screen along with mine. So for our good buddy, Sam Elgin, and also Austin Ash, my new production partner, Michael Merrick. He is at the DITV, uh, the Daily Iowan, as well as KRUI Radio, University Radio Station. So love working with Michael, and thank you, and a fond farewell to our good buddy, uh, Rob Miller, as well. So for the aforementioned guys, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. That's all for me. Thanks to all of you.